Hi everyone, my name is Colleen Drozdek. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. And I'm here to talk to you about five strategies to help you reach a healthier weight. So the first thing is to consider your current habits. What can you improve? What would you like to work on? And what may be some barriers? You're also going to want to consider past challenges. So what are some past challenges to maintaining healthy habits? Did you have a stressful job? How about a busy schedule? Maybe a shift in routine? Or perhaps a major life change? After considering your current habits, and that which you would like to work on and past challenges, we can now talk about the five strategies to reach, help you reach a healthier weight. And I also want to mention these strategies are not listed in any particular order. And I recommend starting with the one that you think would be most helpful and that you're motivated to actually do. So the first one listed here is prioritize your health. It's good to set aside time to improve your sleep, stress, eating, and exercise habits. All four of these significantly affect our health. So I'd first like to talk about sleep. Do you wake up most mornings feeling well rested and ready for the day? It's a good question to ask ourselves. If not, you might want to consider the following. Do you wake often throughout the night? Are you under a lot of stress, which may be a reason why you're waking often throughout the night? Another reason why you may wake often throughout the night is, are we drinking too much water before we go to bed? And we have to get up and go, go to the bathroom. Do you use an electronic device before bed? Or fall asleep with the TV on? I'm pretty sure a lot of us are, are doing this, especially the electronic device, using our phones before bed, checking emails, you know, checking, um, you know, social media like Facebook. Are you eating a large meal close to bedtime? Are you consuming too much caffeine during the day or afternoon? Everybody, caffeine affects everybody differently. It's because we metabolize it differently. Some people metab metabolize caffeine faster than others. So if you're a slow metabolizer, it might be in your system much longer, which can affect your sleep. Do you go to bed around the same time every night? It is ideal to have a good, like a solid bedtime that we go to bed. And in fact, you know, between 9, 10, maybe 10 p.m., if possible, is, is at least a good time to, you know, start going to bed, get in bed, and get ready for our sleep. Is there a medical condition that's affecting your sleep? Such as sleep apnea. Next, I'd like to talk about stress. It's important to identify sources of stress in your life and think about whether it's something you have control over and can change or not. If it's something in your control, consider what can be done to improve it. However, if it's not something that's in your control, it is important to find healthy ways to manage your stress. And I also want to say too, it is okay to seek help from a healthcare professional if you have issues or have trouble trying to manage your stress. However, some things to consider include deep breathing, meditation, yoga, enjoyable movement. And what I mean by enjoyable movement is doing something that you like to do with, that involves moving your body. For me personally, it's hiking in the woods. I love to hike and it makes me relax and it actually gives me exercise, which is great too. Journaling is another one. Walking with a friend and calling someone supportive. All of these are healthy ways to try and manage your stress. Next, I wanna talk about eating habits. It's good to ask yourself the following. What am I eating? 
Because my diet consists of things such as whole foods, like eggs, chicken, beef, tofu, broccoli, sweet potatoes, or is it more processed, like hot dogs, french fries, and pizza? Do I spend my time planning my meals and snacks? If we plan meals and snacks, we are more likely to eat healthier and set ourselves up for success. Do I routinely skip meals? If we skip meals or skip a meal during the day, we may end up more hungrier later on and overeat. So I typically re recommend individuals try eating every three to five hours. Do I eat out more than one to two times a week? The more we eat out, the more added or extra calories we'll take in, most likely, and more unhealthy fats and higher amounts of sodium. Am I making good choices when I eat out or bring home takeout? And do we know what a good choice is? Do I sit down for meals or eat on the go? Do I take my time with meals and snacks? If we're not sitting down for meals or eating on the go, we're probably not taking our time with meals and snacks. And this is important because it takes about 20 minutes for the signal to go from your gut to your brain that you are full. And one way we can help to slow down our meals and be more mindful is to put our fork down between bites and also eat without distraction. So sitting at a table and eating our meal or snack if we can. Lastly, it's good to ask yourself, do I eat when I am stressed, lonely, bored, sad, or even happy? It is ideal to eat mainly when we are physically hungry and be aware if we are eating when we are stressed, lonely, bored, sad, or even happy. Lastly, when it comes to prioritizing our health, we want to consider exercise or movement. And the most important thing when it comes to exercise or movement is making it something you enjoy and can stick to. I picked this picture of a woman walking through the woods because that's one of my favorite things to do personally. It's important to consider the following. What would you like to do? Are there any barriers? Perhaps you have a bad shoulder or you have knee pain. So we need to consider these things. When can I do this? When is a good time of week for you to do this? How many days can you do this? Have a plan. Very, very important. How can I stay consistent? Again, we need to have a plan. And why should I do this? Always focus on your why, because that is going to be your biggest motivator. And a really good motivator to have is your health and being healthier. The second strategy to help you reach a healthier weight is cleaning out your pantry and fridge. So you will be more likely to eat food that benefit your health if you stock your pantry and fridge right. Again, setting ourselves up for success. So in learning how to best stock our pantry, let's talk about grains. It's best to clean out the refined. So what I mean by that are the white breads, pastas, rices, flours, and muffins. Crackers, chips, unless they're whole grain, and also unless the muffins are whole grain as well, by the way. Cereals with less than three grams of fiber and more than eight grams of sugar per serving, and low fiber, high sugar snack foods, such as cookies. It's then best to stock up on the whole. So by that I mean steel cut oats or old fashioned oats. Sprouted bread, an example of that is some Ezekiel bread, or uh, Fred Meyer also has a sprouted legume bread um, that is good as well. Typically find that in the freezer aisle. And then uh, wild or brown rices, barley, farro, bulgur, 100% whole wheat pasta, popcorn, that's air popped or skinny pop, and quinoa. So next I'd like to talk about fruits and vegetables. So what should we clean out? Well, fruit with added sugars, including sweet and dried fruit, like craisins, uh, fruit packed in syrup, and fruit snacks. 
fruit snacks, even if it says it's made with 100%, you know, real juice or fruits, they don't have the good whole food nature of oh, whole food, like eating a whole orange. They lack the fiber. Juice is another example of that. Juice, even if it's whole, just made from oranges, it lacks fiber. So we need, and fiber helps to slow down the absorption of the sugar from the juice. So, or from the fruit, I should say. So again, we want to eat the whole fruit, not drink the juice. Frozen vegetables with added sauces and french fries. Again, all things we want to clean out of you either our freezer or pantry or perhaps our fridge. And what should we stock up on? Well, any fresh or frozen starchy or non-starchy vegetables. So some example of starchy vegetables would be sweet potatoes, winter squashes, and some non-starchy veggies are summer squashes, onion, broccoli, tomatoes. We also want to stock up on fresh, frozen, and unsweetened dried fruits if we like those things, but again, be mindful of those portion sizes. And fruit cups, packed in water, that is. Another thing to remember, too, is we can also leave certain fruits or vegetables out on the counter, and if we have them in sight, we're more likely to eat them. So things maybe like apples or cherry tomatoes are something good we can keep out on the counter. We're more likely to grab them if they're on the counter. So next I want to talk about dairy and dairy alternatives. So what should we clean out? Well, things like sweetened yogurts. An example of a sweetened yogurt is usually the fruit on the bottom yogurts, like vanilla, or uh, I should say strawberry, blueberry, peach, things like that. Sweetened milks, such as chocolate milk, processed cheeses, and sweetened nut and soy milk. And what should we stock up on? Well, plain or lightly sweetened Greek yogurts are my favorite, are a big go-to of mine, because they're a good source of protein. They've got some calcium in there, and they are filling. And delicious too. So some examples are the 2% Faye yogurt, plain, and Chobani less sugar is a good one because it has some sweetness, um, but it is definitely a healthier choice and has less sugar than the regular like uh, vanilla Chobani Greek yogurt. Unsweetened nut and soy milks, reduced fat milk, cottage cheese, non-processed cheeses, and whipped cream cheese. All good choices. Next, I want to talk about proteins. So what should we clean out? Well, excessive amounts of processed meats, such as lunch meat, like that can be like turkey or ham, uh, bacon, and sausages. Fried fish or chicken, fatty cuts of meat, and baked beans, because they usually have a lot of added sugars. And what should we stock up on? Well, eggs. Eggs are a great source of protein, healthy fat, and vitamins and minerals. Lean beef, chicken and turkey, fish, uh, especially fatty fish like salmon and trout, tofu and tempeh, dry box, bagged, or canned beans, and picking a low sodium or no sodium is ideal, and dried lentils. Next, I want to talk about fats and oils. So what should we clean out? Well, highly processed oils, such as corn, canola, and soybeans and nuts with added sugars and preservatives. So when we go to, before we buy nuts, turn over and read that food label and make sure what's listed is just the nut, maybe some like a little bit of salt and perhaps an oil in there. Other than that, I, I, I would put it down and go for a better choice. So what should we stock up on? Well, raw or roasted nuts are a good choice. Nut butters, uh, anything like almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter, uh, anything like that. Seeds, so chia seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, avocado, olive, sesame, and coconut oil. I particularly cook with a lot of avocado oil, and olive oil um, is good for salad dressings or light sauteing. Avocados, which are great, you can put in salads. Um, you can even puree and make desserts with, healthier desserts and olives. Lastly, I'd like to talk about beverages. So what should we clean out? 
Well, things like sweetened beverages such as soda, fruit punch, iced tea, juice. Again, these are all liquid calories with like lots of sugars. And again, not good for weight loss. Um, energy drinks, usually high in sugar, a lot of caffeine, not a good thing to keep in our cupboard. Well, what should we stock up on? Well, water, that is if you drink bottled water, or you could also drink filtered water, water from your tap, whatever, whatever you decide, that's fine. Seltzers, could be flavored seltzers, um, particularly without any added sugars though. Teas, without added sugars, and coffee. The third strategy is to plan balanced meals and snacks. Once again, setting ourselves up for success. When it comes to planning meals and snacks ahead, it's good to pick a day of the week that you have plenty of time, or at least I should say an hour or so to do it. And you might want to start by planning three different meals for the meal time you struggle with the most. So for some people that might be lunch and others that might be breakfast or perhaps dinner. And you want to get the whole family involved. That, that way, you know, you can pick up, you can have some meals in there that your family also enjoys. So you're not making, let's say different, like two different things at once for, for dinner, for example. Um, it's also good to search for recipes to try. Uh, two good websites I find are eatingwell.com and Diabetes Food Hub is a good one, even if you don't have diabetes. It's a great resource. You also might want to try setting a goal to try one new recipe per week or every other week. Again, to add in a little bit of variety. You might want to consider batch cooking as well. So maybe cook up a, a, a few pounds of chicken. Um, that you can have that you can throw into different recipes or maybe cook up, you know, two pounds and for one you can use, uh, you can make shredded chicken for tacos and the next you can throw it into some soup. You also might want to try planning one to two go-to snacks for work, on the go, and at home. We will be providing um, a snack handout as well um, to give you some ideas. So when we're planning meals and snacks, we want to make sure that they're balanced. And we might be either modifying our current meals or perhaps looking at recipes. So we want to make sure that these recipes are balanced as well. And what do I mean by balanced meals? Well, we can start by saying making half your plate non-starchy vegetables. So that could be anything such as a salad um, or perhaps some roasted veggies like broccoli and onions. But again, half your plate non-starchy veggies. Next, we're going to make a quarter of our plate a protein. So that could be anything like a lean piece of beef, um, about the size of a deck of cards to the size of our palm, and it, or it could be some chicken or tofu, anything of that sort. Next, we do a quarter of our plate a whole food carbohydrate. So that could be a half a cup of beans, um, about a, a mouse size, so like a computer mouse size sweet potato would be considered a whole food carbohydrate. We also want to make sure that we plan, uh, balance our snacks. So by the way we could do that is pairing a higher fiber carbohydrate with a protein and or fat. So an example of this would be some apple and almond butter or um, mini bell peppers and stuffing those with some goat cheese. We will also, like I said, be providing a snack handout with some more ideas. So this slide is an example of what a balanced plate would look like. On our left side here, we have our non-starchy veggies that take up about half the plate. We also have digestives listed, so those are things such as fermented foods, which are good for our gut. The other quarter on the other side of our plate are our proteins, so things like chicken, turkey, fish, eggs, um, nuts and seeds are listed as well. Um, those mainly have healthy fats, but they also have a little bit of protein. Uh, legumes are listed too, uh, legumes being things like beans and lentils. Those are protein, those have both protein and are considered more, um, they have carbohydrate. So they can be considered up in the other quarter of the plate where the whole grains and starches are listed as well. Some other examples of uh, whole grains and starches would be things like brown rice, quinoa, oats, 
as I said before, sweet potatoes, anything of that sort. And then in the middle, we have our healthy fats here. So things such as avocados, like I said, nuts and seeds, and fatty fish. Now fatty fish is again um, a healthy fat, but also a source of protein. And typically for our healthy fats, we might be cooking them. So, it's, so we might cook our veggies, let's say in avocado oil, or you know, um, perhaps we might be roasting our sweet potatoes with some avocado oil or maybe olive oil, or perhaps putting avocado on our salad. So hopefully this gives you a nice idea of what a balanced plate looks like. So when we're first starting to balance our meals and snacks, one way to do that is consider incorporating more whole foods over time. And one way to do that is perhaps filling a quarter to half your plate at lunch and dinner with non-starchy veggies. So if you're not a big vegetable eater currently, that's okay. Let's just fill a quarter of your plate. And those veggies can be anything like a salad. So let's say pick your lettuce of choice and then add some other raw veggies. Let's say just tomatoes and carrots. That's totally fine. Perhaps you might want to saute some greens like spinach and olive oil and garlic. Or maybe roast some veggies or grill some vegetables and add those to your dish. We can even do fresh or frozen. We can take fresh or frozen veggies and steam them. Maybe sprinkle with some Parmesan cheese. We can even microwave frozen vegetables as long as there's no added sauces. That's a great way to get in some veggies. Alternatively, if you don't want to put veggies with your meals, start choosing vegetables and snacking. So perhaps take a bell pepper, chop it up, and dip it in some guacamole or perhaps some mashed beans you've made. You know, any way we can, or, or perhaps celery and some almond butter. Any way you can get more veggies is a great start. The fourth strategy is to rethink your evening snack. So before you reach for that snack and sit down on the couch to relax, a good thing to think about is, am I actually hungry? Or am I eating out of habit? How about boredom? Maybe stress? So let's say you find that your nightly snack is out of habit. Well, a good thing to try is brainstorming a new healthier habit to put in its place. Something you know you'll be able to repeat nightly. And remember, it can take two months or more to develop a new habit that you'll stick to. So give it some time. What if it's boredom? Well, you can just try distracting yourself with something else. Or perhaps read or work on a fun project. Something to stimulate your mind. Or if it's stress. Well, like we talked about before, consider healthy ways to de-stress. So some of those things might be deep breathing, warm bath, meditation, or connecting with a friend. And if you check in with yourself and find that you are actually hungry for an evening snack, here are some things to try. Make your snack sensible and balanced. Just like we talked about before with snack pairing. Have planned snacks in place. Practice portion control. You know, one example of this is instead of grabbing the big bag of popcorn, maybe measure out two to three cups of popcorn and put it in a bowl. Eat without distractions. TV inclu is, is included in the distraction, as well as reading or anything else that takes our mind off of what we're eating. And let's say we're not practicing portion control and we're eating with distractions, we're going to overeat or eat a lot more than we probably intended to. Lastly, allow yourself an occasional treat under 200 calories. So one, one way to do this is you can look for single ice cream cups. I know Breyers Natural has cups that are about around 120 calories. Um, or there's ice cream bars like Yasso um, ice, uh, yogurt bars. You can also buy a, a lighter ice cream and measure out a half a cup. Uh, one ounce of chocolate melted and drizzling that over berries is another example, or perhaps a cup of raspberries and pairing that with four tablespoons of whipped cream. All good options that you can try and help you rethink your evening snack. The last strategy is to shift your mindset. So these are some things we should try to think about when we're working on shifting our mindset. 
The first is try not to think of food as good or bad. The second is to challenge negative self-talk. And lastly, think sustainable lifestyle change instead of dieting or not dieting. So let's start with trying not to think of food as good or bad. And the reason why I say that is because if we think of food as good or bad, we might associate ourselves with being good or bad. And that is certainly not the case. Rather, think of it as I am making a choice to eat in a, in a way that supports my health, or I'm not making a choice to eat in a way that supports my health. It doesn't mean you are being good or bad, simply a choice that you're making. And you know, a healthy way to look at it without being too rigid when trying to eat better is the 80-20 rule. So an example of that is, let's say we have uh, three, we eat three meals a day. In a week, that translates to 21 meals. So if around four of those meals maybe, you know, aren't super, like, or aren't uh, totally balanced like we talked about, with the half our plate veggies, a quarter of it being protein, a quarter of it being a whole food starch, Let's say we, you know, order in some pizza and we enjoy ourselves, you know, a slice or two of pizza. That's okay. That, that can fit. So again, thinking of food um, as making, or our, our, our way of eating as making a choice that supports our health or not, rather than you being good or being bad. Next, it's important to challenge negative self-talk. So, you know, making changes to our diet and lifestyle is hard work, and it's important to acknowledge that. It's also important to recognize when we're having negative self-talk occur. And that's actually the first step. It's also important to acknowledge or recognize if something triggers the negative self-talk. It's good to be curious about it, too. Is it something that's actually true? An example of this could be, in your head, you're thinking, I shouldn't have eaten that whole sleeve of crackers. I'm feeling this whole eating better thing. But it's important to first recognize that and then ask yourself, is that true? Are you really failing because you've eaten that whole sleeve of crackers? And ask yourself, why? Why did I eat that whole sleeve of crackers? After doing those steps, then you try using some positive self-talk. You know, you're, I'm trying my best. It's about progress, not perfection. Lastly, think sustainable lifestyle change instead of dieting or not dieting. And it is very important to try to avoid weight cycling, which involves losing weight, then regaining it, and then dieting again to lose weight. So a lot of over-restriction and then overeating, or going back to your habits that you previously had. Next, focus on progress, not perfection. Losing weight and be getting healthier or eating healthier, I should say, is a journey and it takes time. Make sure to celebrate small achievements. Um, some examples of some you know, good, small but great achievements are filling half your dinner plate with vegetables, taking a 10 minute walk, planning three meals for the week, packing a healthy lunch or snack, or making a good balanced choice when eating out. You know, these are all great things you have achieved and it's important to celebrate them. And it's important to celebrate them in a non-food related way as well. So perhaps buying yourself some new walking shoes, renting a movie that weekend, you know, something or, that you can come up with that you find rewarding. Lastly, be flexible and stay curious. So being flexible involves really letting go of those strict and rigid dieting rules. Uh, for example, if you overeat or eat something you know that was not the best choice, reassure yourself that it's okay. And it's totally normal, might I add. And make your next meal or snack a healthier choice. So pick up right where you left off. Being curious is important because you can be curious as to why, why did you indulge? Did you undereat that day? Did you skip a meal? Were you feeling down or stressed? Did you feel, and, and you felt like you deserved it? Were you celebrating? Uh, were you bored? Were you eating while you were distracted? Or did you overindulge just because you really wanted to? You just felt like you wanted to in that moment. It's important to be aware of why 
and stay curious. I also wanted to mention that being flexible is associated with a healthier body weight, success in keeping weight off, and causes less psychological distress and improved well-being. Lastly, remember, it takes time to lose weight, but it doesn't take a lot of time to start improving our health. We can do that by making our next snack or meal choice a healthy one. Balance and hold. So I just wanted to recap what we discussed today. Five strategies to help you reach a healthier weight include prioritizing your health, cleaning out your pantry and fridge, planning balanced meals and snacks, rethinking your evening snack, and shifting your mindset. So I just wanted to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this webinar and I hope you enjoyed it. And please feel free to come check out our website at www.sounddietitians.com. You can check out our blog for nutrition related information as well. You can also reach us by phone. And I also wanted to say a thank you to our sponsors, Verdant Health Commission and Silly Valley Health Connection. And consider checking out their event calendars for either of our sponsors where virtual classes are being held on a variety of topics. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Take care.